I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. Uh, we're here in front. We're continuing our live coverage coming out of our primetime special. I'm joined by my colleagues, the Defenders, Karen Drew and Kevin Dietz. Uh, great to have both of you here. We've been getting a lot of comments, I know, uh, the past hour. So many people were commenting on Facebook and Twitter about our special because I think we've reported on it so much as you have, but tonight was a night that we could put the pieces together. Yeah, because there's so much information. I mean, just the investigation alone, Kevin, I mean, that in itself, you're talking about years and the potential for hundreds of witnesses. People want to know that people are going to be held accountable. They're living it up here every day. They're trying to uh, drink water from bottles. You're trying to bathe and shower. And they're like, wait, somebody is responsible for this. We want to make sure that someone's being held accountable. And I think they found out tonight that uh, that the investigation is well underway. These documents that are getting released, they already have all of those. They've gotten those through subpoenas, and they have every document there is to, to look at. And they've already started interviewing people and taking statements from people. So they're well on their way into the process of looking at who's responsible and who ultimately will get charged in this in this investigation. But we were talking on the way up, because I was asking in terms of timeline, even though they're on the way, we're talking multiple years in the sense of investigation. Because you got the state, you got the federal, yeah, you guys, so the state investigation will go quicker. Uh, okay. The federal investigation will take longer. Uh, it'll probably take, um, you know, there, you could see charges in less than a month from now, but you may not see that get to trial for a year from now. And what will happen is they charge somebody and uh, charge them with a crime, mm -hmm. and then they, they talk to them about cooperating and going up the chain. So as they go up the chain, more and more people will get charged. And I, maybe you remember from the Kilpatrick mm -hmm. case, but people remember, oh, there was like three, four guys at the end. Well, in the beginning, there was 40, 50 people who were charged. Right. So, so there's going to be a lot of cases. You may not know their names, but, but it's going to start pretty quickly. But it will continue for you know three, four years. They'll still be going after the biggest fish in this. Beyond the investigative part of it, you know, I know that you did a story tonight with a family and showing different struggles. What kind of sits with you when you think about what people have to do? We got all this water behind us in this firehouse. Just what people have to do daily just to well, get water. And we were talking about that because let's just say somebody gives you this bottle of water and you don't have a car. Right. So what, you're supposed to hold your baby on your hip, hold your two-year-old, don't let them run away, jump on a bus, and then pick up this water. Right. That's if you're lucky enough if somebody even donated the water and you have the ability to get on the bus. There's so many people that are homebound. You've got the seniors. We, we talked about the Hollies tonight. 90 and 95 years old. I can't imagine. They take medicine six times a day, and they don't have any water to drink, so they have to use the bottled water, but they don't have the money to buy the bottled so water. So how do they get the water then? They, some people are dropping it off from their church, and wow. other people are just helping out. And then they've got a caretaker, but then it's interesting because she was explaining how she has to bathe them because mm -hmm. they can't get up the steps. So she has to take the bottled water, and then she heats it because you can't take a cold bath. Right. And I, then you take a bucket, and then you got to bring it upstairs to put it in the bathtub. You know how many times you have to do that to get a one warm bath and then hurry up and help? By the time you've got the tub full, the water's cold. <laughs> yeah, the nine-year-olds I mean, can't get up the there's stairs. There's a lot of people I mean, who are using the water, and they yeah. don't have bottled water, yeah. and they don't have filters, but they're using it because they can't get here. Right. And even though there's a lot of people helping deliver bottled water, there's, there's still people, they know there's still people who aren't getting it. And imagine how fast you go through this if you're truly trying to use it to bathe or right. do your laundry. I think about your clothes. family of five. Boom. This yeah. would be like, you yeah. know. I mean, well, you've talked, I mean, everyone from Chelsea Clinton, um, you've got celebrities, politicians. What do you think in terms of, I think it sometimes seems like sometimes when a big national figure, not necessarily yeah. a politician, it seems like a lot of times a lot gets done. Yeah, I mean, they or draw attention it's... to it, which is good. I mean, yeah, the celebrities have come into town and some have offered, you know, help or money or possible solutions. Uh, I think the the debate is going to be good because, you know, Flint, Michigan will be on the national stage and everybody maybe who hasn't even heard of it, although I think most people across the country have might be, well, you know, why are they in Flint, Michigan? Mm -hmm. And obviously there, there's going to be a lot of conversation there about it. After that, though, I don't know how far it goes into November. Does it become right. a big political issue? People like Rachel Maddow will say yes, but so far only the Democrats are talking about right. it. Right, you're right. The so I don't know. I mean, uh, John Kasich uh, mentioned it yesterday, but he was in Michigan. Right. So I think it's hard to avoid it. If you're here, the Republicans are going to be at the Fox for people, that debate. People I'm talking to are saying um, the, the people of Flint have to make sure that we strike right now. They don't want to be drinking bottled water. Right. It's great people are dropping bottled water off, but they want water out of the tap. Yeah. And we're talking hundreds of millions of dollars. And they need to make sure while everyone's focused on this, right. while the national debate says that they get a guarantee that these pipes are going to get replaced. You heard the governor talking about, well, we need to find out if we can recode or replace <coughs> all these things. 
whatever they're going to do, they need to make sure that they get a commitment, a financial commitment to start immediately, start as soon as possible, because it's going to take years anyway to get all of that done. So, so they really need to think about how do we move off bottled water and how do we get permanent safe drinking water. And you want to strike when the iron is hot and you're the focus of conversation. But it's, you know, again, it goes back to the struggle for the people because you've got the mayor saying, dig up every pipe. It has to be done right. tomorrow. And then the governor is saying, well, we're, we're going to survey the situation, take a look at which ones we should dig up. As, but I mean, you see both sides of it. But for the person that lives down the street here from this firehouse, they want the pipes gone because right. they don't Cause trust don't anybody. Take a chance. Yeah. Do you think the NAACP jumping on this and saying we need at least a plan in less than 30 well, days? Well, I mean, it's a, a obviously a very powerful organization. And I think, you know, I, I don't know if the governor is threatened by a protest. He's had many from yeah. right to work to, you know, any other big issue he's been taken on. Um, so they've made a threat that if, if he doesn't do 20 different things by within 30 days, they'll launch a national right. protest and focus it on Lansing. So Everyone wants government to be fiscally responsible, but there's certain situations where you can't put a price tag on it. So if you need for everyone to, uh, uh, for people to believe in government again, and, and to believe in the water again, to get this city going again, if you have to do new pipes and it costs twice as much, Sometimes you just have to do that. There's a human element yeah. uh, that you can't look Replace. at accounting yeah. and, and how it looks on the book. Sometimes you just have to do it. And the federal government has agreed to chip in. Uh, the state has a surplus. I, I think they're going to. The governor's going to have to have a, a, a serious talk about using the money that they've saved up to get this situation resolved. Because nobody's moving forward from this until until the plan's in place, a plan everyone believes in. And right. from what we've heard, nobody believes in in trust the recoding even though the scientists say it's safe. Yeah. That's not what they but want. But then in terms of doing the pipes, I know they said they did that in Lansing, but now the question is, because I keep hearing, oh, we can do it in a short time period, in a couple of years. Where and Lansing heard took 10 years. 10 to 15 years. So that's a it's frustrating because even then as what reporters, happens we try to if, get answers right, and we if, can't get a time I think right. the one thing that we've been talking about, too, is if the federal government rolled in and said, here's your check to take out of the pipe, well, then what happens next month if Gary, Indiana says, hey, we have lead pipes, too, or, right. you know, Roanoke, Virginia discovers, hey, then do the, are the feds on the hook to fix the problem in every even, city? Even more reason to move quickly for yeah. the people of Flint. Yeah, you're it, right. You you're know, right. It, the problem is right here, right now. Uh, the the national debate is right here. So get strike while the iron's hot. Get in here and get people safe drinking water. Replace the pipes. Isn't it really? When you think about it, it's really like extraordinary that. And I know we've been covering it for quite a while, but this started in 2014 where people were taking brown wa water right. to City Hall and saying, I can't drink this. And I'm now I'm just we, amazed that that happened. And people weren't listening. Yeah, it's frustrating. And, and then there's the question of, is it because it's a, a community right. that doesn't have a lot of money or, or is it because the media didn't hold people accountable? But I just can't I imagine asked, I asked showing up. I said, I said before lead was even a part of this, just when people had brown water that looked right. bad, smelled bad, why didn't you step in right then and say, I don't want any residents in the state of Michigan drinking ugly brown. water. Yeah. And he said, well, we threw a million dollars at it to try and make the water look better and smell better. But that it was wasn't. Chlorine, right? Yeah, but it yeah. wasn't it wasn't happening. The, it, 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 it's, it continued to be a problem and it turned out to be dangerous um, so you know when you when you look back at that if that happened in Birmingham the residents would have gone crazy the Detroit media would have gone crazy mm -hmm. you know you had the Flint media up here which was which was working hard on this situation but I don't think they have the same reach as right. the Detroit media does right. and then getting to the national media as well yeah. and so it was interesting when Rachel Maddow really jumped in on national media it kind of woke up everybody yeah. and said hey we gotta it woke we, us up on a mean. certain level right because you kind of knew what was going on but you didn't realize how bad it was and then when they started talking about those kids and I know you did that live shot the I was Morgan. angry and I tossed to you yeah. and he had all those kids just lining up getting their uh, the shots, the lead test, yeah, yeah, and the yeah, and they're crying, and that's what I think about as a mom, just going, how do you in the world do you explain to your kid, okay, this is why we're coming here, and we're going to get your blood tested, yeah. but and you we just want to know if it's poison, and the kids are crying, right. and I don't know, but I you just, can't, you certainly can't blame the people of Flint. They were screaming, they were, they were, they were down at City Hall with jugs of water. The problem was the city council. Uh, they looked at them and they said, "It's really there's nothing we can do for you. We're, you know, we don't have any power. No, we don't have any power. Right. The emergency manager has all the power. We don't. There's nothing we can even do except send a letter, ask people. So it was it was really a, a, a 
horrific, perfect storm, and everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And what was the one email that was sent, or the notice that just said, uh, you know, they're crying about it in Flint, but it's right. fine, don't it's worry, fine. the it water's July, fine, yeah. drink it. So, I mean, okay. you know, to the media here, maybe, too, in Flint, if, if they have different state agencies who are telling you, you don't have a story there, the water's fine, we tested it. Mm -hmm. You know, then maybe people were like, well, they just have brown water. You know? What's the mayor? Because I know you talk to the mayor almost on a daily basis yeah. in terms of what does she think? She has a little bit more authority than mm -hmm. she did before when the yeah, governor said, okay, she can appoint folks. I know she wants to change the pipes, but what's her outlook now? Like, what does she think, honestly, what the likelihood? Uh, I, I think that she's got about, uh, she has a $55 million plan that she's put together. Mm -hmm. She's got 25 already from the state. I'm sure the feds will chip in something. I, I don't know if $55 million is going to cover the project that she wants, though. But, you know, just uh, the mayor herself, I mean, she's got to be exhausted. She's been, uh, you know, on this, whether you agree with her or not, she's been working 18, 20 hour days every day, meeting with everybody who comes to town. So, um, she definitely has her work cut out for her. I'm sure she had no idea when she was sworn in that it was going to turn into this. Um, so, you know, she's got a, a huge job uh, ahead of her. And, and it's really interesting. Her relationship with the governor is really interesting because you remember well, in early together. January when they walked out shoulder to shoulder. Well, and then the first time he came to Flint, they had a press conference together. Well, we haven't seen those two together since then. Mm -hmm. And that's well, because she's appealing to her people saying, I hear you. I want to replace the pipes. And he's saying, we got to wait and see. Well, at that point, though, she needed a commitment from the governor that he was going to get, get yeah. some money here. And she got that from him. She got that first 28 million I yeah. think it was commitment yeah. and then that's been increased substantially now yeah. and, uh, and and now she's fighting for the people of Flint saying hey we, we need to get this done right we need to get it done sooner and you talk about the competing plans you don't want uh, the city having one plan the state having another right. plan, and the feds having another plan but I think the mayor's probably talked to enough engineers who, who work here who are familiar with the plan she has access to all those folks yeah. I think I think there's probably certain areas that they know regardless they have to dig up the replace. Yeah. So why why wait for a study when there's certain areas that you know need to get done? And even if just symbolically, you want to let people know Shovel that in the stuff ground. is happening. Yeah. And they said yeah. if they're going to do it, they're going to tackle the residential on the north side first. Yeah, the, the north end of town is you know your much older infrastructure and older homes. But you know the governor will say, and he's been saying that. Um, his concern now is if you start digging and you don't do it in the right area, you maybe you're going to cause a bigger problem. So that's his, you know, move on this right now. So, by um, the way, we're at the firehouse and they're back with right. a fire truck in right now. If you're that noise, <laughs> we got to so let them do their the, job. The firehouse is where all the water supplies are. People are coming by and picking up the water, and uh, they're, they're just moving the trucks in. How busy has it been in terms of water pickup? Uh, it's it's very busy right at around. They stop at what time do they stop? Nine. They stop at nine, so they're they're wrapping for the okay. evening. But when you come here at, at between four and six o'clock, I mean, cars just line oh, up. Wow. And this is one of five. This is the fifth. This is number three, I know. But there's five, five different fire stations in, in town. And and is there a limit? Can you do one case a family? Well, or they how normally do, they do, do one case a car. But I mean, we've seen different situations where people have pulled up and said, like, oh, I'm getting some for my friend or right. a senior. What are, or, what are people telling you? Like, how many cases do they really need? A lot a of people say they go I, through a case a day. I would think I need ten a day. I, yeah. I can't imagine a case of water being enough. I, you know, we have a family of five uh, yeah. just to drink alone, let alone if you're trying to yeah. think of anything else. I, I can't and remember, imagine. this all just started in January. So before that, they when were buying it, if they, they were buying it. it. And when we first got here, which was January 6th, I think, I remember talking to a guy at a gas station who had been to Walmart, CVS. They were out and he was buying seven up at a gas station so his kid could brush their teeth. He was buying Seven Up, a two liter of Seven Up, and he's like, "It's it's and, the only thing I can do." And the, and the governor, do you remember the, that? The, the governor acknowledged the problem in October. So yeah. this was in January. Right. There's still no no water up here. The response was horrible. I, whether you agree with the governor or not, who did what, everybody agrees. Even the governor says uh, the response to it was an epic fail. I mean, it was just. Horrible. I mean, that really stunned me. You would think that 
I mean, you would think, you know that you, you're going to be spending some money on this thing. You think you would just get every truck in the Midwest delivering water up here. So right. so much water that the, your problem was too much water. Right. You know, but we didn't see that at all. That's October, like the November, day, December. The, the day they holidays. said the December, National Guard was coming. Seven so seven. I figured that day we were driving up Shots and they said the National good. Guard's coming. I thought it was going to be like helicopters just <laughs> dumping water. People on street corners just spraying the that. There were seven members of the guard, and and the listen, the they guard has great been great, job. and they're Definitely. here. But their job is essentially to somebody walks in and they hand them the water. Right. right. I really did. I thought they were going to so, be knocking on doors. But people are still doing that. No, doors. but that first yeah. day, like remember the first day? And yeah. Then they, remember, wasn't they, weren't they using inmates? Then they went inmates? from seven to thirty. They were using inmates at one remember period to hand, out to hand out filters. Yeah, the response was a disaster. Why do you agree? Then with? you're at home, and then you've got an inmate knocking on your door to give you a filter. Which well, is like, it's not, they're they're guards. Well, <laughs> I no, get it. Oh, I you're just, really cold. I'm I, I get it. Yeah, but I mean the response. Do, to Kevin's Do you think point. that they just felt like the water was probably fine for ninety percent of the people? And I mean, how do you how do you suspect I think that, that that happened? I think that it was. I think that it was. They didn't respond in the way they should have because the people weren't. They weren't. Hearing? Getting the message out. No, and to... they weren't unified. They were right. taking it because they didn't know what else to do, and they're more concerned about feeding their kids and washing right. their kids and forming some kind of rally. So, so when you talk to the uh, talk to the folks who live up here, I mean, didn't they just say like we've been yelling about this for eighteen months yeah. and nothing, and now all of a sudden January comes and everyone is talking about it and their right. water's coming. I mean, what a what a crazy thing to yeah. be begging for help for so long and yeah. then suddenly being heard. Yeah, I think on one hand, uh, some people are skeptical of the media, saying mm-hmm. like, oh, now you're finally here. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, they're like, thank you, you're here. Right. You know, so and I both mean. Both are probably true. Yeah, I, I think they get it, but I think that they were very, very appreciative of, of Maddow's coverage mm-hmm. and, and really that helped. There wouldn't be a debate in Flint if it wasn't for the work that Rachel Maddow did. So that's just the And I know we don't like to toot our own horn, but obviously you've done a ton of work. Help me hang franchise and with Art Van and getting all of this water. So that's been a big commitment for Local 4, too. And we know the investigation is moving forward with the Local 4 Defenders. And, of course, we appreciate you for tuning in not only here online, but also at Local 4. Keep the emails coming. We've gotten so many good email Mm -hmm. messages, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, Get in touch with us and let us know your thoughts about this situation. We will continue our coverage here in Flint for tonight. I'm Hank Winchester along with Karen Drew, Kevin Dietz. Thank you for tuning in.